Welcome back to my channel Technology in the Future. Today we are going to explore one of DJI's most interesting upcoming drones, the DJI NEO 2. DJI has long been the leader in the drone industry, setting standards for aerial imaging, FPV experiences, and professional filmmaking tools. Their innovation continues to shape the market, and the NEO series stands out as a particularly creative line because it brings together affordability, versatility, and a taste of DJI's premium technology for a much wider audience. The original, DJI NEO made waves when it launched because it was among DJI's most budget-friendly drones while still offering far more than just basic flight features. Unlike typical entry-level drones, the NEO supported smartphone controls, the DJI RCN3 controller, and even compatibility with FPV gear like the DJI Goggles 3. This meant that beginners could start with simple flying, but enthusiasts could also step into immersive FPV experiences without paying high-end prices. While it wasn't the strongest in every category, its appeal came from how much it could do for such a low cost. Now DJI is preparing to launch its successor, the DJI NEO 2. Early details have surfaced through FCC filings, which often reveal hints about new products before their official announcements. These documents don't give us the complete picture, but they reveal enough to see what DJI might be planning. And this time, there are some surprising changes that suggest DJI is testing a brand new strategy for its entry-level lineup. DJI NEO 2 FCC Filing Key Details the FCC documents list the DJI NEO 2 under model number DN225, alongside a second listing for something new, the DJI NEO 2 Digital Transceiver, model DEP1. This caught the attention of drone enthusiasts immediately, because it implies that DJI may be separating one of its most important features, OcuSync Transmission, into an optional external module instead of building it into the drone itself. For those not familiar, OcuSync is DJI's proprietary video transmission technology. It's what allows drones to deliver sharp, low-latency, long-distance video feeds to controllers and goggles. Almost every DJI drone from the past few years has included OcuSync by default. Even the first Neo offered both Wi-Fi and OcuSync straight out of the box. The FCC listing for the Neo 2, however, shows support only for Wi-Fi 5, GHz Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz GFSK. Protocol what's missing is OcuSync. Instead, DJI seems to be planning the release of the Neo 2 Digital Transceiver Module as an optional add-on. This device would unlock OcuSync capabilities when attached to the drone, bringing stronger range, lower latency, and compatibility with advanced DJI accessories. The Role of the Digital Transceiver According to the FCC RF test results, the transceiver module supports OcuSync at both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz frequencies, runs at up to 26 dBm RF output, and connects via dual antennas. It uses a 5V input, which suggests it's a compact and lightweight module. This means that out of the box, the Neo 2 will likely work with just a smartphone or possibly the DJI motion controller, giving users a simpler and cheaper way to fly. But for those who want the full DJI experience, flying with the RCN3 controller, DJI Goggles 3, or other OcuSync devices, the extra module will be necessary. This is a major shift in strategy for DJI. Until now, OcuSync has always been integrated into the drone itself. The closest example of modular transmission came with the Inspire 2, which allowed swappable controller modules, but even then, the drone carried its own transmission system. Why DJI might be making this change, there are several potential reasons. Behind this bold move, affordability. By keeping OcuSync separate, DJI can reduce the base cost of the Neo 2, making it more appealing to beginners who don't need advanced features right away. Regulatory flexibility. DJI has faced challenges in markets like the US over transmission technologies. Selling the drone in a Wi-Fi-only configuration may simplify approvals, with OcuSync available as an optional upgrade. Modular Ecosystem DJI could be testing a new modular ecosystem where pilots customize their gear depending on budget and needs. Beginners may stick with Wi-Fi, while professionals add OcuSync for serious flying. How the DJI Neo 2 might work in practice base Version fly with smartphone through DJI Fly app 
potential support for DJI Motion Controller. Limited to Wi-Fi and GFSK. Transmission. Upgraded version with transceiver full OQ sync unlocked. Works with RCN3 controller. Compatible with FPV goggles 3 and other pro gear. Extended range and low latency video feed. This dual setup concept is different from DJI's usual. Approach of releasing two models, like standard versus pro. Instead, the Neo 2 seems to come in one version, with upgrades added through accessories, camera, battery, and other specs. The FCC filings don't give us much about the camera or design, but they do confirm a slightly larger battery capacity compared to the first Neo. This suggests longer flight times, possibly in the range of 25-30 minutes. Considering how fast DJI iterates, it's very likely we'll see an improved camera sensor as well, boosting both photo and video quality to make the Neo 2 more competitive against rivals in the budget and mid-range market. Why the Neo 2 matters DJI Neo 2 could mark the start of a new modular philosophy for drones. By splitting Wi-Fi and OcuSync, DJI can reach a wider audience. Beginners get an affordable drone with simple smartphone controls. Enthusiasts get the option to expand into professional-level transmission. DJI gains flexibility in how it sells drones across different markets. If this strategy works, it's possible that future drones like the DJI Mini 6 or Air 4 may also adopt this upgradable approach, letting buyers pick and choose features rather than paying for everything up front. Final thoughts in summary, the DJI Neo 2 is real and already in FCC documents. It launches with Wi-Fi only connectivity by default. A new digital transceiver module unlocks OQ Sync. Expect a larger battery and possible camera improvements. DJI may be testing a modular, customizable drone future. This release could reshape how entry-level and mid-range drones are sold, giving users the choice to start simple and upgrade as they grow. It's a smart way for DJI to expand accessibility while keeping advanced features available for serious pilots. So, what are your thoughts? Do you like the idea of buying a Wi-Fi-only drone and adding OcuSync later, or do you prefer having everything built in from the start? Share your opinion in the comments. I'd love to hear your take. If you enjoyed this deep dive and want more breakdowns of the latest drones, cameras, and future tech, don't forget to subscribe to Technology in the future for all the updates.